with respect to body composition, so, you know, we were talking about the benefits of, of resistance training on bone density, obviously muscle mass, and people are now thinking about those things. But, you know, back in the day, you know, body composition, and it still is important as well, but so that was kind of one of the major um, things people would think about, like why they should do resistance training. How, can you talk like a little bit about body, like how does resistance training, you know, affect body recomposition? Sure. Can you gain muscle without gaining fat mass? Sort of, sort of things like that. You know, all great questions. So, um, well, let's start from the basics that uh, resistance training can improve. Certainly, it improves lean mass, which is largely muscle mass. When I do think it's important to understand like certain measures, underwater weighing, uh, like a lot of the measures that you'll see, DEXA, um, underwater weighing, um, BIA, bioelectrical impedance analysis, they are looking at not necessarily muscle mass, although there are ways to try to derive that. But when, you're, when they talk about fat-free mass and lean mass, generally, depending on the measure, they're combinations of, in the very least, muscle and water. So it's not necessarily just, if you're gaining water, that'll show up as fat-free mass. It's not Anything outside of fat mass would be fat-free mass. Um, and that, I think, is somewhat important to understand there. But with that said, uh, resistance training certainly can impact the fat-free mass uh, aspect, and it can help with fat mass. Now, I, I want to say in general, and this goes for cardiovascular exercise too, um, exercise is not the best way to lose body fat. It can help. It's certainly, I think, a good adjunct to a fat loss program, which I'll get to in a second, but you have to do a lot of exercise to meaningfully uh, lose fat, whereas it's just much easier to do it through reducing the calories and nutrition, the energy intake. So, for instance, if you do um, an hour of cardiovascular exercise and hard, you know, where you're running for the most part, I mean, you can burn five, six hundred calories in that hour. I, you know, that's, you have a bag of potato chips <laughs> that could pretty much offset everything you've done. Um, whereas if you focus on reducing the energy intake through your food, and using exercise as an adjunct, they can certainly help with the uh, weight loss, not only in terms of increasing uh, energy expenditure to some extent, uh, because by the way, doing an hour of exercise every day uh, for most people is just not a, is, it becomes very laborious. Um, and that's just cardio. You know, like I said, you want to do uh, resistance training as well. And resistance training, cardio actually is somewhat more effective just purely from creating more energy expenditure. Uh, than resistance training is. But here's the, the catch. It is, in my humble opinion, fundamental to uh, combine resistance training, at the very least, with an energy deficit through uh, nutritional restriction to promote weight loss. And here's why. If you do not lift weights, even if you, you just do cardio, you will lose muscle as you're losing body fat. And there are... Um, Depending upon how you're going about it, um, evidence shows 25% to 30% of the weight lost will come from muscle. So you might lose, let's say, 70% fat, and it can even be more if you're somewhat leaner, and 30% coming from lean mass if you don't do resistance training. Now, you talked about recomp. Uh, resistance training not only will stave off the loss of fat-free mass often, but you can actually recomp. Recomp means you can gain muscle while losing fat. There are two primary factors, and I'll leave out, so there's three. The elephant in the room is anabolic steroid use. So if you're doing anabolic, taking anabolic steroids, yeah, you can have serious recomp. But putting that aside, that's probably not your audience or uh, most of the people listening here. The two primary factors are, number one, how, uh, how much weight do you have to lose? So are you obese? The, the more weight you have to lose, the easier it is to recomp. Also, how long have you been training? So someone who has a lot of years of experience of training that's higher to their, closer to their genetic ceiling, uh, will have a more difficult time recomping. Um, now, I will so, by the way, so if you have a lot of body fat to lose and you're just starting out, you can do serious recomp. I see this all the time, not only anecdotally have I seen this in clients, but we have controlled experiments run through our lab where I see this all the time in individual 
uh, subjects that we have. Um, you cannot, however, maximize muscle mass while you are losing fat. So this is important. If your goal is to go into, let's say, a mass gaining cycle where you want to, let's say, bodybuilders do this or strength athletes, and your goal is to maximize uh, muscle development, you're at the very minimum going to need to be at maintenance. And generally, you're going to need to be in a small surplus where you're going to gain a little bit, at least some amount of fat. Okay. Um, boy, this, this is fantastic information. I'm just, it's sinking all in. Um, so can, so if you are in a caloric deficit, and this kind of brings us into the protein, dietary protein requirements world a little bit. If you are in a caloric deficit, and but you are, and we should probably talk about what the protein requirements are, um, but let's say you are getting sufficient protein intake, daily protein intake to counter, to prevent your, your body from pulling protein out of your muscle, basically. Um, can you not lose the lean mass or muscle mass? Let's say you're not doing resistance training, but you are just getting the protein in. And say, say you're doing aerobic, but you're still in the caloric deficit, deficit but you're getting the protein. And not With, lifting weights. You're not lifting weights. So the answer is it will help to preserve some lean mass, but you're still, no matter what you, if you are not lifting weights, I mean, this has been shown again over and over in research, you will lose, and well, I want to at least, I always hate to talk in absolutes because if you're very obese, uh, where you just have, a, let's say you're 100 pounds overweight, you can lose fat without losing muscle, much more red, because you just have so much fat to lose that the body's going to pull from the fat stores. But I'm talking when you're starting to get down into, you know, people who just quote, are quote unquote overweight, uh, you're going to lose muscle. If you do not resistance train now, even if I want to point out though, even if you're lifting weights, if you are getting insufficient protein, it's going to, you're going to leach some muscle. So you, you need to still take in sufficient protein. And there's actually evidence that uh, you need more protein than uh, what has been shown for people at maintenance or above to maintain uh, muscle or even to gain it slightly when you're in a caloric deficit. So that actually increases protein needs to some extent. 